Alrighty guys, before jumping in this video, I just want to point out a quick disclaimer that at the time of filming this video, I was under the impression that this was a $138 RC. So a lot of the stuff that I say in the video is based upon that price. Now that's before Ruko sent me an email saying that it's currently $50 off. So just keep that in mind watching the video that rather than me testing a $138 RC, I'm actually now testing an $88 RC, which will definitely make a difference when it comes to expectations based upon the price. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nolan. In today's video, I have got an unboxing for you guys. So I had the company Ruko send me this machine uh, and I'm gonna unbox it. I'm actually at my test location. It's an amphibious vehicle, so we're gonna drive it in the water. Now, I have pretty high expectations for this RC because of the hefty price tag this RC carries. Uh, looking on Amazon, this RC comes in at $138. So it, it's very, very pricey. And looking at the box, it looks very much toy grade. So I'm a little bit skeptical, but I asked Ruko, I said, hey, I'm gonna be 100% honest with my viewers. So if you're gonna send me something, expect me to be completely honest. I'm not gonna be a sellout and just say, hey, it's great if it's not great. I'm gonna tell you whether or not I think it's worth that price tag. Now, Ruko has surprised me before. Uh, they actually sent me a military tank about a year and a half or two ago, and that RC very much surprised me. That one came in at $120, and that was every bit worth that amount of money. Uh, now, that did not look toy grade like this. That looked much more realistic. This doesn't look super realistic. Um, so that's, I think, where a lot of the skepticism comes from on my part. But since Ruko surprised me before, I thought I'd give them a chance to test out their RC car. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna unbox it. I have already opened it, so I cheated a little bit, but I had to open it to charge up the two batteries that it comes with, but I never really took a look at it. So what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead, get it unboxed, uh, gonna take a real quick look at the box, real quick look at the RC, and we're gonna test it out on the pond because it's supposed to be 100% waterproof. It's also supposed to float, so that's kind of cool. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in the unboxing right now. So first things first, looking at the box, uh, it looks like the model is actually called the 1601 AMP AMP. I assume that stands for amphibious. As you can see over here, it says amphibious RC car. It is a 110 scale, waterproof IPX6. I don't know exactly what that rating means, but I assume that means it's very waterproof. Now I do know it has headlights and I believe it has tail lights as well. It does come with two batteries, which I already charged up. Um, okay, on this side just says high performance, 360 rotation, so it must be kind of zero turn. Yeah, front and rear lights, all terrain, waterproof controller, that's kind of cool. And it does say ages three and up. Now, I do know Ruko said this is between ages three and six, so I kind of said, you know, a lot of my viewers are not that young. Are you sure you want me to test this RC out? They said, yeah, go ahead, test it out. So keep in mind, guys, this is supposed to be for ages three to six, but with a $140 price tag, that's pretty expensive for a parent to buy for a child. That's in my personal opinion, but we're gonna find out in today's video if it's worth that amount of money. All right, then it just tells you how to use the, use the controller on this side. And there's just all your warnings and stuff. Uh, now I do need to point out, fortunately I looked at this before I left home because the batteries are not included for the controller. And fortunately I looked because it takes AAA batteries. So I think it takes two, it takes two or four. I think it's two, I brought four with me, but keep that in mind if you buy this RC that it does come with the batteries for the car, but it does not come with the batteries for the controller. So uh, let's pull this thing out of the box. All right, moment of truth, pulling the RC out. Kind of left the batteries kind of sitting in there. They came better packaged than that. Here's your little, uh, do apologize, it's very windy. Here's your little user manual right here. Set that there. Here's the two little batteries it comes with. They are uh, 7.4 volt, 850 milliamp. I think these are lithium ion, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. I think they're lithium ion. And it claimed 50 minutes of runtime between the two. So that's quite a bit of runtime. All right, so here is the RC car. So first taking a look at it, just as I thought on the outside of the box, it looks very toy-like. Um, actually, I thought these tires would be like rubber. These are not rubber tires. These tires are hard, like plastic. There's no give to these tires at all. Here's that little controller. So let me get this stuff cut out of the zip ties and uh, we're gonna go down here to the water on the pond and see how this thing does. 
By the way, if you're enjoying this unboxing so far, make sure to show your support by hitting that like button. Also subscribing and hitting that bell so you'll be notified whenever I come out with new videos. Look at these shocks in here. These look fake. They're just painted. And lift you up on the wheel. There is no suspension. So this thing has no suspension. It claims to be pretty durable. This is what it looks like underneath. I assume it's direct drive. I assume it's a motor on each wheel or a motor for the front and motor for the rear. That would be my guess. But I assume they're locked. Eh, it's not locked actually. Oh, it's side to side because I forgot zero turn. So these two on each side are linked together. That's why they're both turning like that. So I guess the only other thing came with, this is the box that the batteries came in. Um, it does come with, didn't come with the batteries. I brought my own. I think it only takes two of these AAA. It does come with two of these uh, little USB chargers right here. Didn't take super long to charge them, maybe a few hours. Also comes with a little Phillips head screwdriver uh, to open up the back of the controller as well as I think the battery goes in the top of the RC right here. All right, and there's just one Phillips screw on top. There we go. All right, so, gosh, it's so windy out. Okay, so these just move like that. And I think you can just, you can probably put both the batteries in here, but you can only run one at a time. So there's really no point in putting both of them in. So it just plugs in and uh, I'll put that back on. This appears to be the only button on the RC on the top. I don't think there's any other buttons on this thing. So uh, let me get that battery plugged in and uh, we'll take her down to the water. All right, so to turn this on, you just press that button and then Okay, pretty simple. I don't think, I guess the lights are on on the front. It says they're front and rear lights. Those rear lights don't look like they're on though. I don't know, those rear lights are on, they aren't very bright. I can see the front lights are on. All right, let's see how she does first in the grass. Here's the right and left, yeah, so it's, it's basically zero turn, guys. I think, well, let's do a top speed on the grass real quick, because I think, um, in the email they said it's like 12 or 15 kilometers an hour so what's that like seven or eight mile an hour so not super fast so I'll go full speed that's full speed okay that's like six at best maybe five it's like five or six miles an hour fly by wow all right, let's get down to the dock, and uh, I guess we're just going to launch this thing in the water and see if it does, in fact, float. All right, guys, I'm just going to set my camera up right here on the dock. So I'll have both hands for the controller. First, I'm just going to set it in the water and see if it actually floats. Or should we just drive it in? Let's just drive it in. It claims to be amphibious. Here we go. Okay, it's upside down. I actually saw it on the video. But not completely in frame. I actually showed it, saw it on the video. It can still travel even upside down, which is kind of cool. So, like it's still moving. And I think that's part of the reason why the tread pattern is kind of backwards. So the tread pattern, if you look at it, I guess I never pointed this out. The tread pattern is pointed the wrong direction, but I think it's for specifically going in water. So it's actually moving. Probably like a mile an hour. Let's get her flipped over again. This water's not the cleanest. Still, I don't think those rear lights are working, so I don't know what's up with that. Let's put her upright. So, here's what upright looks like. It does legitimately float, so they're not wrong, and it claims everything's 100% waterproof. There's full speed. You know, it, 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 it's moving. It's going at like, I don't know, two mile an hour, maybe. Maybe less than two, I don't know. Not bad for across water though. We should test the range out and see how the range is. Okay, here's your uh, 360, the zero turn in the water. Okay, that's pretty cool. It definitely has some capability. It's, But keep in mind, I have high expectations because of the price. What do you guys think so far? It's just hard to get over how toy like it looks. I wish it just didn't look as much like a toy as it does. So the only hiccup so far is I don't think those rear lights are working. 
I want to step back so you have a little bit more perspective, kind of where I'm at. Here's the dock right here. There she is out in the water. It's not moving super fast, but you know, you can't really expect it to go super fast. Kind of weird when you try to do both at the same time. So when you try to steer it and go forward, you can do it, but it just, that's what happens. So it, it just makes the one side stop moving altogether when you go forward and then you just turn left. So you can go left or you can go left with the off switch or without doing any forward. So if you do it without doing any forward, it just does a complete 360, like a zero turn lawnmower. Let me zoom in a little bit. All right, now I'm zoomed in. She's moving. I wanna pull all the way across to the other side. Like right over there, right there where my finger is, there might be a spot where it might be able to get to the other side. So let's kind of aim for that way. So we're still trucking away. Hopefully that right there is a good spot to try to go across. Or try to actually get up. I don't want to get stuck on that side. Otherwise, that's a long walk to get to the other side of the pond actually. I, and I'm not swimming. We're gonna try to go right there. Okay, right here, this is gonna be our spot. Right there, we're right at the bank. Are we gonna get out? I think with these type of tires, they're just hard, like plastic. That's not helping with traction actually. It does great in the water, but it's not doing great for traction to get onto the land. Come on, it's so close. Come on. It kind it wants to. No, okay, we're tipped. Oh no. We're tipped, but we're not tipped really in the water. We're tipped on kind of the land. So it's not deep enough for me to keep on moving. Crap. Okay guys, I'm gonna have to take my Jeep and I'm driving all the way around this to get over to it. So I'll resume video when I get back over to it. All right guys, we have reached the other side. We weren't able to pull ourselves up the grass. I mean, it is a lot, when you get over here, it is a lot steeper than what it looks on that side. So here it is right here. So you see what happened? It got tipped over in water that's not deep enough. Oops. Recovery. Now she's all wet. Kind of gross. Yeah, I think the thing just struggles for traction with these type of tires on land. And I think it's a little bit slower than what I expected. I thought it'd be a little bit faster. This is pinned. And really, I have no way of testing the durability unless I just start running this thing into a tree, which I might. And that's running into a tree full speed right there. I don't know, this might be the end of the video, guys. I think you kind of saw what the capabilities of the machine are. It's good for basically one thing. It can go in water, it can drive across it. It appears to be waterproof, still working after driving in the water. But as for, is it worth the $140? Personally, I don't think so. I said, I'm gonna be honest. And honestly, I just don't see this being worth $140, especially for someone between three and six. I think older than six year olds can have fun with this. Like I've had fun with it, but it's really a kind of a one trick pony. Uh, it can drive in the water. These tires really, they don't have traction on the grass. Wet grass or in any type of grass, it can't really get anywhere. It can't get through the tall grass. So like I said, it's a one trick pony. The capabilities are basically limited. Um, there's no suspension. Like I said, hard tires, they really need some sort of soft tire if this is gonna be able to actually drive on land and in water. But you can kinda see how I said earlier how the tread design looks backwards. So I think this is for treading water going forward. And it just looks super toy-like. And the rear lights never came on. So that is my consensus on the Ruko, what do you say it's called, the 1601 amp, amphibious car. Um, I 
did leave a link for it and there will be a link in the description down below if you do want to buy it um, but for that price I think that's a very very steep price for this RC car and that's my honest opinion so thank you guys so much for watching this video if you did enjoy the video even if you don't like the RC car make sure to show your support by hitting that like button also subscribe and hitting that bell uh, so you'll be notified when I come out with future videos hopefully there'll be more unboxing videos in the future but uh, thanks for watching see you in the next one Alrighty guys, now in conclusion, uh, now that this is an $88 RC car, that definitely changes what I overall think of the RC. Now, I still think that's kind of on the high side for what you get, because it is kind of a one-trick pony. Really about all it's good for is in the water. Once you get on land, those plastic wheels do not grip up very well. Uh, it can't get through a lot of terrain. It just does feel very toy-like. It doesn't have actual shocks. Uh, there's a lot of stuff missing, I think, if they want... To have even that $88 price tag. I do think that's much more within where it should be, but realistically, I think the price tag should be probably around 70 bucks. 70 bucks for what you get uh, for that RC. So that's my final consensus on this machine. So thanks for watching. See you later.